Hello, Syed here. Um, I wanted to go over some updates to the Dev Tunnels experience in Visual Studio that we've been working on. And here I've got a solution loaded that has several projects here, and I've got two projects loaded to start. I've got the API project as well as the web project. And in the past, if you recall, in launch settings.json, we had to add a couple properties here to get the Dev Tunnels uh, enabled and to specify the access level. We're going to go ahead and delete these because we no longer need these. And we'll go through the new experience. All right, so in the new experience, when you open a solution that contains one or more ASP.NET Core projects, you'll get this flyout here that shows the tunnels which have been previously created, as well as uh, a way to create a tunnel, and then to show the Dev Tunnels window as well. So here we've got the Dev Tunnels window. You can either create a new tunnel with the plus button, or you can create a new tunnel in the flyout here with create a new tunnel. These will both bring you to the same exact place here. And here we'll go ahead and create a new tunnel. So one of the things that, uh, one of the benefits with these updates are that now you can create tunnels with different um, accounts here. So in the past you were limited to creating with one account. So here you can create account, you can create a tunnel with with different accounts here. All right, I'll go ahead and create a new one here. I'll call it Syed test one, two, three, four. And another new functionality that we are able to provide with this new experience is uh, specifying the lifetime of that URL. So um, should it be a temporary URL or should it be a persistent URL? With temporary, um, each session of Visual Studio will We'll, we'll get a URL, and then when you close Visual Studio and reopen it, the temporary tunnel will get a brand new URL, and the old URL is no longer accessible. With persistent, so here with persistent, uh, what that means is you'll get a URL, and then when you close Visual Studio and reopen, you should get that same exact URL. Um, if there's a if there's an extended period where the tunnel doesn't get used, you know, several weeks then the tunnel might get cleaned up behind the scenes. But as long as that tunnel is being actively used, then you should get the same URL. And then here you can also specify the access level, private, organizational, or public. I'll go ahead and choose public for this demo here. Go ahead and create that. So now we get a little message here to indicate that the tunnel has been created and is currently active. And I can see the currently active tunnel here in the, in the flyout. And we're updating the Dev Tunnels window to show which one is active as well. And the idea is when you select a tunnel to be active, every ASP.NET Core project that launches will get a tunnel for that project. And when you close Visual Studio and restart, it will go back to none. That way there's no, you know, there's no tunnel happening behind the scenes without your awareness of that. All right, let's go ahead and try this out. So I've selected Syed test 1234, which is a persistent URL. Let me go ahead and run this. Okay, we'll get the, the typical page that we get from the dev tunnels here that lets the end user know that you're accessing a tunnel. Let me go ahead and copy this URL. I'm gonna throw it into my notepad. And then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and close Visual Studio and restart it. And then we should see that we get that same URL. All right. Let me load up the Dev Tunnels window. It does take a few seconds to initialize this window and for your tunnels to be to be to be available for use here. Okay, now let's go back to the Dev Tunnels flyout. As you can see, we've gone back to none here. Let me go back to Syed test one, two, three, four. Go ahead and launch my app one more time. And then here, we should see that we get that same exact URL that we got last time. Let me go ahead and paste this and we can see that is indeed the case. All right, now um, a persistent URL is really great for when you're integrating with a with an external service. So for example, if you're developing a Power Platform application, you'll have to register your tunnel URL with the Power Platform and 
And then from there, each time that you debug your app, uh, it can use the same URL. So you're not having to constantly go back and, and uh, reconfigure the Power Platforms app. Um, a GitHub webhook is also another example of that. Um, also with external services like, let's say, Twilio, you can register your persistent URL there. And then every time you run that app, you'll get that same URL and you don't have to be worried about reconfiguring that external service another time. Let me go ahead and switch to use a different uh, URL. So I'll go ahead and do a temporary um, tunnel here. Let's go ahead and start that. Okay. Okay, we get the, the typical page one more time. Let me go ahead and copy this new URL. Let's go ahead and paste that there. And then once again, I'll go ahead and close Visual Studio and restart it one more time. And this time with the temporary URL, we should get a brand new URL each time that we start Visual Studio. I'll go ahead and reload the tunnels, the dev tunnels window. Um, so that way we can, that way we know when it's ready here. All right. Go ahead and select the temporary tunnel one more time. Go ahead and start this application. All right, let's just go ahead and verify that we did indeed get a new URL. All right, so we did get a new URL. And then uh, let me try and access the old URL. So the old URL is no longer a no longer available and it's not connecting back to your local machine. And a temporary tunnel is a really great, uh, a really great option when you just want it for a short period of time. So for example, if you're developing a web app and you want to share your in progress work with your colleagues, you can create a temporary URL, share that with your colleagues, they can try it out. And, and then after that, you'll close Visual Studio and then that URL will never work again in the future. All right, let me show you another update, uh, which was actually uh, in a previous preview, but um, it's also good to know about. So when you run a tunnel um, in Visual Studio, you'll get for the, for the application itself, you'll get a, an environment variable called VS underscore tunnel underscore URL. So this is the templates web project. So this is the, this is the URL for this web application itself. And then let me open up the startup projects. So here we can see that I've got templates API configured to launch before templates web. So the templates web will get an additional environment variable for the URL for templates API. So any project any web project that starts after another one that has tunnels enabled, you'll get the variable for those projects. Let me go ahead and run that and then we'll inspect the output window. All right, let's go back to Visual Studio here. So I'll go to Templates Web, scroll up a little bit, and then here we can see that I did indeed get the URL for the Templates Web and then as well as the Templates uh, API. All right, that's it for today. This was Syed. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.